Hey guys, it's Kims. Welcome back. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So in today's video, we are going to learn some very interesting stuff. So stick around. All right, guys, so we made some characters and some enemies, but they go to the script. Then you can see we made a code attached to our player. Let's try it. All right, as you can see, we can collide with the enemy, but there is a problem. We can walk on top of the trees, then we don't have a collision. So we can even walk on top of the sea, on top of everything. So we're going to fix it. First of all, we are going to fix the tree and enemy problem. So we'll go to tree, press on the first one. And by maintaining shift up to the last one, we are going to select all of the trees on the scene. We are going to ordering, then on Z index, change it on one. That is it. Now close this one. Go to goblins. We are going to select also out of them by pressing shift on from the first one to the last one. Do the same. Go to ordering and change the Z index on one. All right. Let's check it. Now run the game. Now you can see we are under the tree. By changing the Z index, we can pass under the tree, then feels more natural than walking on top of the tree. We can even hide behind the tree. That's good. Okay, now we gonna close this one and we are going to reduce everything, even the decor. Go to the word node, right click, add a child node. We are going to add a static body to the area. Double click on it. Add it. We're going to rename it. I'm going to call it limits. I want to create some boundaries to our scene so that the player cannot walk anywhere on the C, so add a child node to that limit and we are going for a collision polygon to the on the right side on packet vector to the array we are going to add an element as you can see the size is on one and leave it like that everything's leave it like that we are going to press on this mold icon then we are going to start to draw we uh, going to draw around the mass of grounds so as for me I'm going to just come close to the grass and bridge and everything do as you want to do it but for me I feel like I like to do it like this so just draw around everything no need to be that perfect as for me I'm not doing it perfectly but if I was making a project game for myself I would have take more a lot of time making it very perfect making those lines very straight those corners and everything will be perfect so just do as I'm doing if it's your first time to use a pol a collision polygon 2D to don't get confused so I'm not going to touch that small lozenge so I'm going to do another round again and now I'm going to attach it as you can see the colored part is the part that going to collide with the player so now I'm going to try to make it a little bit straight and try to make it a little bit better all right I won't make too much uh, details but I'm just going to adjust some few stuff down here then you can add just by clicking and by right clicking on a point you can easily remove it cool now save it we are going to try it so run the game now you can see i can collide with the wall i cannot go out of the path of the ground i can walk through the bridge but i cannot go on the left hand side of the bridge then i'm kind of like stuck on the ground that's very great. I'm going to lock it and lock the 
parent and hide it i'm not going to hide the parent i'm just going to reset it so i'm going back to decor on the trees i'm going to the tree i want to resize the shape i feel like it's a little bit too small so i'm going to unlock it now i'm clicking on it i will adjust the size and maybe the length i'm going to increase it and put it in the middle i'm going to lock it save and go back to words and save again all right i'm going to reduce the size of this and sounds very great to me run the game again and now when i collide the tree seems very natural not not perfect but a little bit natural under the tree behind the tree looks very great okay now i'm going to warrior i'm going to check on the animations uh, i want to show you how to run at least one animation in this video as a bonus so i'm going to try this animation so after that i'm going to the script first of all we need to add a variable i'm going to add a variable then i'm going to call it attack then attack will be uh on the first state i want to make it false all right so when nothing is pressed the attack is equal to false so i'm going down here i'm going to add hashtag to create a comment that helps me a lot when i'm coding to remember where every block of code is so player is attacking all right i can just copy this block of code and Control V, I'm going to pass it right here. So if input action is just pressed, I'm going to change here. Instead of down, the attack is, is here. If you don't remember how to set this attack, go and watch my second video, then you'll see how to set an input key for the attack. So I'm going to also change the variable attack to true when the attack key is pressed and idle will be equal to false as well. So I'm going to add another condition. This condition is for when the player, the player is not moving, but is playing the attack animation. So the animation won't be confused with the idle animation so if even if i don't move i want my player to play the animation attack so i bet you understand what i'm trying to explain so now under here i'm going to add another con condition attack if the attack is equal to true i'm going to press tab make sure to press tab and to see how is really aligned as in my code i'm going to add quotation mark okay now i'm going to change this animation by a side underscore swing you gotta make sure the animation is correctly spelled because if you write some things that you didn't create in your animated sprite 2d that animation won't be called and there will be a mirror in the code so you have to check i'm going back to sprite frame so i'm going to check my writing so it's perfect it's side underscore swing as you can see now i'm going to try it i'm going to run the game now if i press as you can see it doesn't play directly we need to do some adjustments but as you can see when i'm playing i'm pressing my space that's my attack button. The player is running the animation attack. Okay, sounds very great for me. So this is it. Side swing. You can create a lot of them. You can just copy and pass and change depending on how many attack button you want to add to your game or how many condition you want to create. If you want to create a single key to press all the animations it on you i'm going to show you it all of that in the next video so 
if I want to change animation, I can just uh, take this one for example. The side underscore swing underscore up animation. I'm just gonna change in the code underscore up. Then if I run the game, you can see the animation change. Sound very great for me. I feel like it's better to add more buttons for attacks, not only one button, but there will be a little bit more complication if you want to add all the attacks animation on one button. So close this. Seems very great to me. I'm going back to the word scene. Press on 2D. Very great. Now I'm going to Warrior. I'm going to change the shape. So I unlock this. Then I need to change the shape. Oh no. I'm going to click on shape. Go to shape and change it to the capsule shape 2D. I feel like this one is suitable for our character more than a circle. So I can adjust it to his size. Feels better. Lock it and hide it. I'm going back to tree, then I forgot to hide this one. Okay, seems better. I'm going to save and run the game again. I can move around, move around, hide under the tree. Animation looks very smooth. I can walk and play my animation attack. Seems very good for me. Go back to the script and the speed. I'm going to change the speed. Uh, wait, I can just directly change it. 200 and the acceleration, I'm going to change it to 20. Fine, fine. So I can move more. On my screen, I can play the animation, but looks like there are some mistakes that I need to adjust. Look, it doesn't play idle animation anymore. So, go back to the script again. I'm going to add another condition to the input. So, I'm going to add and if attack, if my attack animation is equal to false that means the player is not playing the attack animation so if our player doesn't play the attack animation our player can play the run animation it's just a matter of condition and setting up some codes nothing difficult you can adjust as much as you want as much as you're creating your game just check on it some mistakes can happen but look just correct them quickly seems fun to me. I'm going to run the game again. That mistake happened when you press the attack animation and the Adam direction key, like ups, up and left and right. So I think it might be in the variable change state. Maybe the attack animation doesn't change from false to true but i settled it right here so what i'm going to do is um i need to i need to change the timer maybe i'm going to reduce that wait time to maybe 0.3 and enable one shot run the game just trying and trying again as you can see it's working but after the swing animation my player doesn't play any more idle animation, so I'm going to disable the one shot, save, and try it again. Alright, looks more playable. That sounds very great. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share to your friend. So see you very soon for the next video.